Welcome Battle Brothers, I am the Epic Narrator and this is part 2 of the Shock Attack Wave Gun. If you haven't seen part 1, I suggest you follow that link above. This story was written by my Patreon Tom Zimbardo. If you're interested in either getting a narration or maybe a miniature painted by myself, why not check out the Patreon link below. And also, if you're interested in cheap Games Workshop, 40k, Dungeons and Dragons, all of that sort of jazz, 10 to 25 percent off check out my element games link as well for everyone else this is part two enjoy chief mech arsenic slowly made his way up the cliffside path back to the small gargant that had become his home it was bigger than a stomper but far smaller than the great gargant being assembled in the scrapyard below he named it mork's gift and had fitted it out with the finest inventions including a telescope which he could view the whole construction site. It also has a force field generator and of course the shock attack gun. Arsenic sighed to himself. If only Warboss Zagrub hadn't learned about his shock attack gun and somehow misheard it as shark attack gun. He wouldn't have demanded that the chief mech make him the biggest shark attack gun that all kind has ever seen. Arsenic had hoped to surprise the other orcs with his massive shock attack gun on the battlefield, but now those dreams were over. By the time he'd reached Warp's gift, it had already started to rain. All the boys and grots were done for the day and would head back to the nearby shanty town to drink fermented squig juice, sing and fight until the sun finally set. Arsenic was in no mood for drinking though. He just unlocked the entry hatch to his garden and shut it tight behind him, listening to the heavy rain hammering down on the metal hide of Mork's gift. He headed for his hammock to rest the night, but before he could get there, he tripped over another one of his pet's inventions. Monkey! Chief Mech Arsenic Monkey! yelled, as he almost fell over what looked like a miniature killer can. What's this you're making now? I hope you ain't been using all the best bits again. Monkey's head appeared upside down from the hatch in the ceiling, the simian's rust-coloured fur bristling at the sound of his name. Monkey never spoke again, and Arsenic was not even sure if Monkey could actually understand him. But the small orange ape seemed to be very skilled at making machines, so the mech kept him around as a lucky charm of sorts. You's made a killer can this time, I see. <laughs> only this one's only big enough to kill a grot. What's that it's what's that it's wearing there? Oh mock. It's those exploding finger guns. Monkey had a habit of making tiny weapons that fitted neatly into the wearer's fingers. Incredibly, these weapons could fire a miniature bullet, bolt, needle, laser blast, or even a small lightning bolt. Monkey had given several of them to his master and the mech had warned them all the time at first until one of them exploded that was. And the mini killer can was covered in them. Oh, how many times has I got to tell you, Monkey? No more finger dackers, all right? As he yelled at his pet, Arsenic waved his large bionic finger at his pet threateningly. Monkey had made him that finger too after the exploding finger dacker had taken his real finger. We ain't got time for exploding killer cans. We's got to make a big shark attack gun and quick. At the mention of the word shark, Monkey tilted his head slightly to one side. That's right, Zagrub wants a shark attack gun. And uh, what the boss wants, the boss gets. Arsenic made his way past the bunk, rooting around through half-written plans, plates of food and assorted bits of machinery gubbins. Monkey was just watching silently as usual. Ah, there it is. Arsenic grinned, picking up the remote control to turn the plasma reactor. He pressed the button and the reactor hummed to life, bathing them in a pulsating purple light which contrasted with orcish flesh and monkey fur alone. The plasma reactor would soon charge up the shock attack gun for some test firing. Arsenic noted that the plasma seemed to be flickering less. No doubt, Monkey had been tinkering with the magnetic containment field again. Oh no! Ah! Oh, I was never going to make another reactor with an attack gun in time, said Arsenic, talking to himself as much as to his pet. We, we's going to have to move the reactor and the gun 
into the Great Gargan. Then we's going to have to make a shark sucker to get the sharks into the war projector. Then we's going to have to make look, a high capacity shark magazine for feeding sharks into the shark sucker. Maybe, maybe a belt feed or a drum magazine. Then, well, it's gonna have to get some boys to go shark hunting in the submarine to get the ammo for the shark attack gun. Monkey just looked at his master. Arsenic knew that if he made a machine or weapon, that Monkey would tinker with it. Sometimes improving it, sometimes just making it prettier or shinier, and sometimes making something that even Arsenic couldn't understand, but not that he was going to tell the other mechs that. With Monkey's help, Arsenic had become the most respected big mech in the whole of the clan. Um, but first... Arsenic continued grinning. We's going to do some target practice and kill all the Zagreb spies. Arsenic looked through his telescope to the small hut on the far side of the valley. He knew that a group of commandos who thought they were really stealthy had been spying on his mech gargan from there now for some time. Looking through their own telescope, thinking they were real sneaky. Little did they know that Arsenic was onto them. It must have been them that had told Warboss about the shock attack gun that he'd made. Now, Arsenic wanted revenge. He would make them pay for spying on his inventions. The mech looked around the room for something good to load into the attack gun. He thought about sending some scrap metal, but most things here were either half-made machines or something that he needed to complete something else he was already making. Ideally, he'd send through some snotlings or a particularly foolhardy grot. He could even send one of the Orc boys through, but he shivered at the thought of what the warp would do to an unprotected Orc. The warp did strange things to living flesh. It changed things. Snotlings, as the traditional choice of ammo, would emerge frothing at the mouth in a wide-eyed frenzy, biting and scratching and waving tentacles that they hadn't even had a moment earlier. Arsenic remembered the time he had seen one appear partially inside a space marine's chest. He laughed at the memory. <laughs> the big tough marine in his fancy armour and stood a chance. The poop bucket. He could send his poop bucket through the warp. It would explode all over those smarmy spying gits, or possibly inside those smarmy spying gits. That would wipe the smiles off their faces. If they survived, and if they still had faces afterwards. Arsenic opened the hatch on the ammo feed and reached in for his poop bucket, but then noticed that Monkey was handing him something. What's this? I ain't got time for... It was the miniature killer cat, covered in finger daggers. Oh, 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 Monkey! Arsenic laughed. Is you thinking, yeah, let's send, let's send the killer cat through the warp? See how they is like having that appear half inside their gizzards. Chief Mech Arsenic loaded the tiny dreadnought into the shark attack gun feed. He looked through his telescope at the unsuspecting spies. <laughs> They's never gonna know what crumped them. Thank you for listening, Battle Brothers. If you want to hear part three, let me know in the comments below. Remember to like. Remember to subscribe. The best way to help the channel grow is by liking and subscribing. And if you're feeling real flush, why not check out my Patreon? Those links are below as well. And until next time, Battle Brothers, may the Emperor protect you through Nurgle's Blight.